Even after Barabbas was set free, Pilate continued to insist that Jesus was innocent. The Jewish authorities said to Pilate, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. Those words turned the tide and Pilate condemned Jesus to death. Although Pilate was more powerful than the Jewish authorities, he ultimately caved in to their request. Why were these words so threatening? Let's explore Pilate's backstory to understand this crucial moment when Pilate passes judgment on Jesus. Ancient historians, including Josephus, writing in about 90 AD, and Philo, writing in about 40 AD, shared stories that give insight into Pilate's character and provide valuable context for his role in Christ's trial. Here's the first story told by Josephus. On one occasion, Pilate transferred some of his soldiers from Caesarea to Jerusalem and violated Jewish law by attaching images of the emperor to their military standards. Many Jews felt this action violated the commandment against graven images and traveled to Caesarea asking Pilate to remove the standards from Jerusalem. After six days of continual protest, Pilate summoned the dissenters to an arena. With his army present, Pilate threatened to kill the people if they did not return home. To Pilate's shock, the people bowed down, stretched out their necks, and waited for death. That was not what Pilate was expecting. He doesn't want to write Tiberius and say, Dear Emperor, I just slaughtered thousands of your subjects. Josephus writes, Overcome with astonishment at such intense religious zeal, Pilate gave orders for the immediate removal of the standards from Jerusalem. So the conclusion to this first story is that Jews protest Pilate's actions and they win. Sometime thereafter, Pilate spent money from the temple treasury to build an aqueduct to bring water to Jerusalem. Apparently, he did so without the approval of the people, for when they heard of it, they began protesting. Pilate refused to listen. Instead, he had his soldiers, disguised in Jewish clothing, surround the protesters. At a prearranged signal from Pilate, the soldiers attacked the Jews. Josephus concludes the story saying, large numbers of the Jews perished, some from the blows which they received, others trodden to death by their companions in the ensuing flight. Cowed by the fate of the victims, the multitude was reduced to silence. In this second story, Pilate wins, but only by violence. This third story is my favorite. It was written within a decade or two of Christ's crucifixion, and it's our earliest recorded account of Pilate. Pilate put gilded shields in Herod's palace, which was located in Jerusalem, with an inscription honoring Emperor Tiberius. The people, believing Pilate did this not so much to honor Tiberius as to annoy the multitude, were furious about the shields, believing they violated Jewish customs. The people sent Herod the Great's four sons, including Herod Antipas, to protest Pilate's actions. Philo records that these important Jewish leaders shouted at Pilate, saying, Do not arouse sedition. Do not make war. Do not destroy the peace. You do not honor the emperor by dishonoring ancient laws. Do not take Tiberius as your pretext for outraging the nation. He does not wish any of our customs to be overthrown. When Pilate refused to act, the Jewish officials wrote a letter to Tiberius protesting the shields. Pilate said that Tiberius swiftly responded by writing to Pilate with a host of reproaches and rebukes for his audacious violation of precedent and bade him at once take down the shields. Though the situation was resolved when Pilate removed the shields, the event caused further strain between Pilate and the Jewish people in his jurisdiction. With this background in mind, consider again the words from the Jewish authorities to Pilate. If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Pilate was a political appointee who could be removed at will. Thus, the statement, you are no friend of the emperor, was not a thoughtless taunt, but rather a carefully crafted threat from the Jewish authorities. Their underlying message seemed to be, do you remember the last time we wrote Tiberius? Do you remember how mad he got? We will write him again and let him know of your support for this Jesus. Could Pilate afford another disagreement with the Jewish leadership? In the ultimate test of peer pressure, Pilate buckled. Rather than criticize Pilate, though, let's ask ourselves, what will you and I do when we feel pressure to turn away from Jesus? To see more videos like this one, simply search Seeking Jesus.